Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be continuing with the topic metals and for today we are looking at the extraction of lead. So we look at how lead is extracted and some properties of lead. So lead is a transitional element that combines with other elements to form compounds with oxidation, two oxidation states. So lead is among like group four elements. We do not discuss uh, in details about lead in terms of their configuration in high school, but we know that it has two oxidation states. So the main ores of lead is we have galena, we have crucite, we have anglesite. So galena is the main ore. We need to know what is going to be used in the process of extraction. So uh, lead is extracted in three steps. We have the concentration of the ore, and then we will reduce the ore, the, the ore that has been concentrated. And then since the product we get is not uh, concentrated or pure, we will purify it or refine it. So it undergoes those three steps, which is contrary to what we saw with zinc. Zinc actually had two methods of extracting it. But for lead, it's, it undergoes two processes. So with the ore concentration is done by froth flotation. So the ore is ground into a fine powder and then water and oil is added. So we talked about froth flotation in, in the introduction bit of this topic. You can go back and check the process in details, how it happens steps by step. Air is blown into the mixture, so it forms um, a low density froth that floats on top and then chemicals such as sodium cyanide, zinc sulfate are usually added to uh, facilitate the separation of zinc sulfide present. Then the separated lead sulfide is then dried and broken into small pieces and then subjected to reduction. So in the reduction process, the first step is roasting the ore. That means we have to heat the sulfide so that we can get our oxide. This is the oxide that we want to reduce. So lead sulfide is heated in a furnace uh, in presence of oxygen to form lead oxide and sulfur oxide. And during the roasting, some of the lead sulfide is con converted to lead to sulfide. Uh, sulfate. So some of it is converted to sulfate. So any lead sulfate formed is converted to lead silicate by silicon oxide. So you can see what is happening. There is a series of reactions that are happening. But remember also in this case the main impurity is silicon oxide. Additionally, the lead sulfate is further reacts with lead sulfide. So you see we are forming the excess, some excess lead sulfide which forms lead sulfate, which now will come to react again with lead sulfate. So the lead sulfate is reacting with the silicon oxide and it is also reacting with lead sulfide to form lead metal. So you can see how selectively this reaction occurs to be able to produce uh, the metal that we want to get. So in the reduction, the lead oxide of paint is mixed with coke. One more, once again, we are introducing coke limestone and silica. We already have know how the functions of this now are. You can check out the previous videos. Cork helps in the production of carbon monoxide, which is the main reducing agent. Itself is also a reducing agent, but carbon monoxide is preferred. Limestone produces calcium oxide and carbon oxide, which goes back to form carbon monoxide. The calcium oxide is used now to remove the silica impurities. And we also add some scrape iron also as part of the, in the, the raw materials. So the mixer is fed in the top of the furnace and where it is melted using hot hair glass. So you can see in the setup uh, at the bottom of the furnace. So lead to oxide is reduced by coke to form lead solid and carbon two oxide. And then the resulting carbon four oxide produced react uh, reduces the remaining uh, lead so this is carbon 204 it reduces the remaining lead to oxide to lead the script ion is added so that it can react with 
any lead sulfide that may be present. So iron reacts with lead sulfide to form lead and iron sulfide, so we are able to get the lead that we wanted. So the limestone also undergoes decomposition to give calcium oxide, as we said, and carbon four oxide. So as you can see from the equation, carbon four oxide reduce, is reduced by coke to give carbon two oxide, which is our main reducing agent. And then the calcium oxide reacts with silica to form calcium silicate, which is our slag. So there are also gases that are given off in this reaction. Um, uh, so some of the waste products apart from the gases is the slag, which is less dense and it floats on top of the molten lead and it's, it's tapered off. And then excesses, gases that don't take part in the reaction also are, are removed from the furnace. Next, we go to purification. So the molten lead that is obtained in this process contains impurities. So it has gold, silver, copper, arsenic, tin, it has sulfur, it has so many impurities. So it needs to undergo electrolysis. So remember we said one of the applications of electrolysis is purification. You can go back and check that out as well. So electrolysis of molten, if we hear electrolysis, we need to have a cell. So this cell is made up of the electrolyte, which will be an aqueous solution containing lead ions. And then the anode is a impure lead. Remember what we said in the previous lesson, and the cathode is a pure lead. So when you look at the anode, I always like starting with the anode because this is where the loss of electrons occur. So the lead solid, because it is the anode, it takes part in the reaction. It's discharged to give lead ions, and two electrons are lost, which travel to the cathode, where the lead ions in solution gain those two electrons to form lead solid. So this is the overall equation. So some properties of lead, some physical properties, it has low melting points and high density. And it's usually uh, the low melting point of lead is usually not easy to explain uh, using the normal metallic board theory. So this is something you will learn further as you go on with chemistry. It's soft and pliable and it's relatively malleable. So go to the uses of lead. You notice we have not talked about any like chemical properties of lead. Lead is very low in the reactivity series. So it's not that reactive. And any properties that uh, involve lead will, is going to be learned further on as you pursue more uh, chemistry knowledge behold high school. So it is used to make alloys, uh, e.g. we have solder and also added to bronze alloys to make them uh, stronger. So lead ignot is also used in the manufacture of accumulators. You remember when you were discussing accumulators in the previous video on the on the lead acid accumulators you can go back and check that out in the topic of electrolysis so it is used to make um, ignots in the accumulators because it's very malleable and inert it is used for roofing and um, uh, so if it is used for roofing it's uh, cost effective and pollution effects have however brought this to a stop. So lead pipes also is used to supply water. Although it stopped being used because of lead poisoning, the lead ions is to get into solution. And then it is used to make tetraethyl to the lead, which is uh, used as fuel additive to increase octane ratings for fuel. It is used in weights, clock, pedlums, plumb, bombs, it is it because of its high density. Remember we said it, is, it has a higher high density. And then it absorbs X-ray and ends leads to aprons and lead glass, which are used to shield hospital radiographers. So that brings us to an end of lead. So I hope you have been able to understand how lead is extracted and also some of the properties of lead. So see you in the next lesson as we look at another method.